First up, let's start with an obvious question. What is problem solving? Well, if you break it down, it's about using logic and intuition, as well as imagination, to make sense of a situation and come up with an intelligent solution. So how might your problem solving abilities be assessed by employers? Well, there are three common ways that they do this. First up, they might ask you for examples of times when you previously solved a problem. These questions can come up in an application form, but they're most likely at an interview. So typical competency-based questions around problem solving include, give me an example of a time when you handled a major crisis. And have you ever had a disagreement with a team member? How was it resolved? Or two, they might present you with hypothetical questions to see how you'd approach problems that could arise in the workplace. So the precise questions will vary according to the job, but common ones include, what would you do if there was an unexpected delay to one of your projects? What would you do if a customer complained? And how would you deal with conflict in the workplace? And thirdly, they might set you some tests and exercises that will assess how you apply your problem solving skills to them. Whether that's a situational judgment test, which is a multiple choice test where you are asked how you would respond to specific situations or scenarios, a games based assessment, or a case study exercise at an assessment center. You might also face a job-specific or task-specific exercise. So for example, civil and structural engineering candidates might be asked to sketch a design in answer to a client's brief and answer questions on it. Meanwhile, candidates for editorial roles are often asked to proofread copy or spot errors in page proofs, which are fully designed pages about to be published. If you are provided with a scenario or a case study during the recruitment process, you might find it helpful to use the ideal model described by Bramsford and Stein in their book, Ideal Problem Solving. It breaks down what you need to do to solve a problem into stages. So one, we've got identify the issue. Two, we've got define the obstacles. Three, we've got examine your options. Four, we've got act on an agreed course of action. And then five, look how it turns out and whether any changes need to be made. And if you're asked a competency question, you will need to explain how you identified the problem, came up with a solution and implemented it. As with all competency questions, it will help to follow the STAR technique. So first, outline the situation, then the task, i.e. what you need to do, the action, i.e. what your specific actions were, and finally, the result. So now you know how your problem solving skills might be assessed. How can you ensure you've sufficiently developed this skill? Well, there are many ways that you can test out and work on your problem solving, often independently. And in fact, problem solving is a natural part of life. So you've probably already gained experience without realizing it. For example, Dealing with any of the following situations will involve problem solving. So sorting out technical problems with your phone, device or computer, or acting as technical support for your friends and family. Resolving a dispute with a tricky landlord in order to get your deposit back. Carrying out DIY work. Serving a demanding customer or resolving a complaint in your part-time job finding a way around a funding shortfall in order to pay for travel or a gap year, turning around the finances or increasing the membership of a struggling student society, acting as a course rep or as a mentor for other students. And finally, if you're a fan of the Queen's Gambit, games such as chess and mahjong can always be a fun way to strengthen your ability to think strategically and creatively. This list could go on indefinitely. 
Ultimately, problem solving is a broad skill made up of a variety of elements. You might already be very good at seeing what needs fixing, improving or transforming, but you might want to engage in activities that help you to improve your ability to decide on and implement a solution. Or you might feel like your strengths lie in taking an existing solution and improving it, but you want to work on your ability to innovate your own creative solutions. If there is a particular element of problem solving that you want to improve on, then you should focus on activities that will help you to do that. Move on to the next part of this course where we will provide a range of resources to help you take your problem solving skills to the next level.